Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Understanding Human Design podcast. And I'm so excited to have a fellow time bender with me here today, human design specialist Annalena Stan, who is a 2 4 manifesting generator slash time bender. And we are, we, we kind of had a little bit of a juicy conversation before we started rolling the recording. And I want to kind of pick it up to that place where, where we were, where we were talking about trauma and deconditioning and the time that it takes to decondition, because you were sharing with me something that I think is a really important point that we don't talk a lot about in human design. And when we do talk a lot, and when we do talk about it in human design, we're talking about it in what I would consider to be very simplified terms. And, and it's not that what we're talking about isn't necessarily not simple, but it's not always easy. So you said to me that you're relatively new to human design, and I know you've been bounding through the material and sharing it in a very rich and delicious way over the course of the last year. But one of the things you said to me was you feel like you have had the ability to really jump into human design because you did so much trauma relief work before you met human design. So talk to me a little bit about what do you think is trauma? What's your definition of trauma? And why do you think that's so important as part of the deconditioning process? Yeah, thank you for the introduction and the question. So a trauma, first of all, I really agree with your definition, like basically any circumstance, event where we don't feel safe, where we don't, we don't feel loved, we don't feel belonging, right? Because these are mm-hmm. our fundamental needs. So I think even when people say like, oh, I but my life was normal, nothing bad happened, because usually we think trauma is like sexual abuse or those kind of things, those big things, right? Um, but, and I have been through certain things. I had an eating disorder in my teens. My mother had alcohol issues, divorce, my parents, right? Like lots of things. Then my biggest trauma was my my daughter had open heart surgery after she was born, she almost died. So. That's also a trauma, right? Then myself going through a divorce. So I think a trauma can be like you spill the milk and your mom yells at you, right? Because then you're like, oh, I'm not good enough or I'm not safe, I'm not loved or something like that, Mm -hmm. right? And then there are really big things. Now, I know that every time I can't really feel it because we have been learned to suppress the negative emotions. And I think that's a big problem. Like we call, we label emotions, right? We say the good and the bad ones, the negative Mm -hmm. and the positive ones. And we have our whole life. So every time we push a negative emotion this way, it creates trauma, I think, basically. Mm -hmm. So so I'm I'm gonna gonna play with you a little bit because I I, I wanna tease this out because I think it's so important. Talk to me about what you would define as a negative emotion. Like, anger, sadness, disappointment, uh, grief, jealousy. Um, what else? Um, yeah, guilt and shame. I think those ones we, we say are more the negative ones, the dark ones. Mm-hmm. So when we experience those, then we are at risk for trauma when we suppress them, when we like not Mm -hmm. allow them because it's not, we're supposed to be happy. We're supposed to smile, right? We we are supposed to be confident. We're supposed to have our act together. Mm -hmm. And and like, it's like this thing like, oh, when you are too sad for too long, you're depressed or something is wrong with you or, you know, people want to, oh, I think it's also like, well, people want to be around happy people, like, right? Mm -hmm. So, whatever and whatever our beliefs are but the way i grew up i mean i thought there's something wrong with me if i'm sad or if i'm being serious i was always a very serious kid and i actually had so many fears and anxiety growing up and i didn't know where they came from right like but i thought there's something wrong with me with that right and i i didn't have any outlet to express it to share it I was more embarrassed and actually ashamed of it. And I think with that, I created more trauma because then shame on top of it, right? Instead of like, hey, this is how I feel. I'm scared of this. I have these fears, you know, that that didn't happen for me. So you were sharing with me that you have 
you did a lot of work before you before human design found you mm -hmm. because you're you're yeah. a, a time vendor so because i think people are really curious about this like what do you do how do you really get rid of trauma especially how do you really get rid of trauma in a lasting way because it's one thing to kind of do a little bit of work but as we know because so much of the way in which we interpret trauma Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean about experiencing trauma, but the way in which we interpret trauma is kind of encoded into our chart. We have in our chart sort of set things that each and every one of us, by virtue of how our chart is defined, we have a, our own way of sort of looking at trauma, internalizing trauma, processing trauma, defaulting to p patterns with it. What did you do to start to clear that slate before you actually encountered human design? Yeah, so can I also share what didn't work? What I've yeah, done? please. <laughs> okay. so yeah, let me first say what didn't work and then what worked. So, I mean, first I did all these work on your mindset, positive thinking, you know, affirmations, like that kind of stuff. Visualization, um, you know, say five times a day what you want and write it down. And, <laughs> and it, it was just like, for me, it didn't feel right in the core of my being. It was just, and it felt so forced, right? It felt very masculine driven, like I have to do it this way. And um, I didn't get anywhere. It, it was just this like endless battle that like spinning in a circle, right? Mm -hmm. And then eventually, and it was sometime, it's like a year and a half now that I have been doing this work. It's basically um, through, the process that I that I first learned is called emotional acceptance, um, and I have now taken it a little bit further. But it started for me with actually feeling my emotions, and especially like, you know, when you get triggered and you feel like the world is against you. I have these fears of, and you can. I mean, I did. I had a I had a one on one coach, right, where I could really address all this stuff. I would be so embarrassed to share with anybody, especially those business courses where you have to be strong and right. I I could like share all my fears, all my, the things that I wanted to put away and pretend they're not there mm -hmm. and really feel it all. And it's, it's a, it's not a meditation at all, it, but it's a very, um, you literally go into all your emotions, you feel it in your body, you focus your attention on your feelings. Mm -hmm. And then you let, they actually like, you can feel that in your body, how it moves mm -hmm. your emotions. And they, they're literally, because, emotions are energy motion right right and by nature all they want is they want to be felt so they can move and move through and out of our body what happens is when we say like oh i don't like you you know with emotional eating for example like you know i don't feel good so let me eat some ice cream so i feel better what we do is we interrupt the natural flow and we keep them suppressed in the body and i i stopped doing that i i not only did I stop doing it on a regular basis as, you know, when things happen, you know, instead of avoiding feeling it, I felt it in the moment. And on top of it, of course, there's a lot of stuff, trauma, what we talked about from the past where I just like peeling a layer of an onion, right? Like mm -hmm. today is this, then is this. And sometimes really big stuff. There was a lot of crying, you know, very unsexy, but I think actually it's, it's sexy to do this kind of stuff. <laughs> Yeah, and um, and then most recently, I have started with another coach. She she basically it's it's all this energy healing work, right? And it's also now a process where she, which I love because I think you do that too a lot with tapping, right? Mm -hmm. Basically releasing, but using tapping in a way where you actually release and say out loud all that you're really feeling and thinking, including mm -hmm. the anger that's there, right? Because we're humans, we, we think some stuff sometimes that we don't want to say, we like, we want to curse at somebody or things like that, right? And that has been extremely powerful to further release the pressure. I mean, it's incredible. And then things shift in your life, you know, you work on yourself and the other person you wanted to fix, they're already, they change by themselves by, by you doing the work because we know that our what we perceive in the world is a reflection of our internal world. It's it's the the lens that we see it through, basically. Yes, totally, totally. So how did this? So when you tell me how you first encountered human design, I'm curious to hear that story. 
Yeah, this was through my dear friend, Alexandra Danieli. She's also here in the community. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we do a lot of things together. She's also from Germany. And she has been working with this coach, Melanie and Leah. And um, in her community, they, they are all about human design. So they, they use human design a lot. And one day, I don't know, earlier this year, she's like, yeah, you have to check this out because we always share, you know, when we find new things and, you know, there are always new things. And when she sent this to me and I pulled my report, I was like, wow, this is different. This is like really cool. And it was so scary um, accurate. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I don't know. And it, it's the first time in my life that I feel like I'm not going to get bored because I don't know if you have the same, but I, I get bored easily with things when it's the same over and over again. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I've people, never gotten bored with human design ever. That's the thing, <laughs> because like, like um, every every person's chart is different, right? I mean, yeah, if some people are born, they're twins, of course, they're the same chart, but it's it's um, it's so unique, and you can go so deep, and every person is different. I mean, and then the gates and the channels and everything. It's just like the first time in my life where I felt like, wow, this is super cool. Like, I'm gonna stick around forever and. And then, like, also, because I'm, I'm all about, like, you changing the world, making it a better place. Like, all right, let's get this out there. You know, more people need to know about it. So it's just, yeah, it was, it, I, it was like love at first sight. <laughs> That's, <how I> say. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. So, so you're a bestseller uh, of a book, uh, a co-author of the book, One Thing Every Mom Needs to Know, and I know you have a daughter. Yeah. Talk to me for a minute about how does human design or how has human design helped you as a mother and helped you, especially in this weird year that we've had where uh, our kids are, I, I mean, I, I've actually really, really enjoyed having my daughter home all the time. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of really dreading when when things will change and she's out of here. But how does that perhaps impacted your mothering and the way you are able to better support your daughter? I mean, I mean, this, I mean, she's also, she's a manager too. Mm -hmm. um, and she has the 3220 channel. So I was, I mean, it, it took my burden off my shoulders because I thought my, la my daughter is a little bit too loud. She's this kid that always bounces around. You know, then you have other kids that watch TV and they just sit there and she can't do that. But, <laughs> but, but now um, I have this like more appreciation for her, who she is. Mm -hmm. And I also, I used to get all flustered, uh, uh, like flustered sometimes, is it maybe not the right word, but um, because she does all these things and she creates chaos, like chaos, like puts paints on the wall and does this and she's but she's having fun and I like to have it neat and stuff but now I can allow it more because mm -hmm. I know it actually benefits her and she's supposed to do all these different things at the same time and she it's it's her way of expressing herself and um so it has created more harmony for sure you know it's never perfect but it has definitely given me like no this is how she is she's not I was kind of like oh but she's supposed to behave she doesn't listen right and now i have a more deeper understanding for her being you know as as a manifesting generator and and also the informing has helped me so much you know i understand now why i like to be informed but also why she when i just take the trash out and i don't tell it to her she's like mommy where did you go like you know <laughs> so it's like it's just um it, and it's it has been a fun thing because I have talked to her about it too. And actually the other night it was so cute. She was asking me, mommy, can you tell me again about the manifesting generator and how it says that I can go to bed whenever I want? I mean, that was her favorite thing <laughs> <laughs> because I, I, I have always struggled to take it to bed early. And then I was laying with her for like an hour. I was like, you know what? Forget it. <laughs> and then I was reading it to her from your book actually a couple of days ago. And then in two minutes she was out. <laughs> <laughs> I won't take that personally. <laughs> no, no, but it, it was late. It was time for her to go to bed. But she she loves to hear that part where she can, you know, stay up late and that she can do multiple things because that's her, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. So Annalena, how can people get in contact with you? 
Uh, probably best on Facebook or Instagram. Just my name. I mean, Instagram's Annalina.Stern. Um, same on, on Facebook. And they can also, well, on my website, AnnalinaStern.com. And I think my email is on there. That's, that's how they can get in contact with me. Send me a message. And yeah. Oh, beautiful. And you, you do coaching and human design. Yeah. So I, I do a combination of human design and the deconditioning work because for me it literally is it's like married together like we needed both and like i said i like to accelerate things and find shortcuts right that's what we're here for mm -hmm. and um yeah and, and i do i mean i do coaching myself privately and then i also with alexandra the one that introduced me to human design we we do many projects also together because we have this she's a projector you know projectors are really good for managers and so we have this beautiful energy together and we have done a couple of programs now and it, it's so much fun for both of us. So, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful, awesome. So AnnalinaStern.com and again on Instagram and Facebook. Annalina, thank you for joining me today. I really have enjoyed having this time to really get to know you and hear a little bit more about you and what you do. And uh, thank you for sharing yourself and your heart and your wisdom and your knowledge and your speed with our community. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much. It was a pleasure for me too and a true honor to be here. So, thank you. Mm -hmm.